Hello and welcome to Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne and I'll be your host on this show discussing the wonderful world of landscape photography. This time I'm talking to Josh Birkinshaw about his landscape photography journey. Josh is a lifestyle and tourism photographer and videographer living on the stunning south coast of New South Wales in Australia, creating captivating imagery for businesses around the globe. Since starting his journey in this creative career of photography and videography, he's also specialised in capturing the awe-inspiring area he lives in and the intriguing places he's travelled to. Josh loves experiencing new cultures and discovering the places that others call home. We discuss Josh's career origins and how the area in which he lives inspires his work. He describes his experiences during the devastating bushfires of the summer of 2019 and 2020, and the initial recovery of the area until that got stalled by COVID. We also discuss an idea for a recovery activity that will have to wait until the end of lockdown, but which I'm sure many Australian photographers would love to be a part of. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, Josh, welcome to the podcast. How are you going? Hey, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm going well. Thanks for having us on. Ah, absolute pleasure. Been uh, looking forward to this, actually. So who who is Josh Birkinshaw? Josh Birkinshaw, um, he is a young fella on the south coast of New South Wales. Um, been doing photography probably, I've always loved it, but uh, pretty much dedicated myself for the last five years to it. Um, I am also a locksmith by day. Um, I have a locksmith business um, as well as a photography business. Um, but yeah, just a yeah, just a knock around boat, really, mate. And uh, <laughs> but just loves getting out and about and really seeing, um, you know, taking in for what he took for granted when he was younger. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So what what got you started, and how did you you know what what made that passion start to burn for you? Um, I, I think I've always, I've always loved it because like I remember like I got a GoPro 2, a Hero 2 years ago. Uh, yep. I think even when I was younger, I had one of those Olympus waterproof cameras and that, but I just never used it. I just got it for oh, yeah, I'll take some snaps. And But then it was like going to, I think it was iPhones probably more than anything that kind of, you know, they were coming out with time lapse features on them and yeah, right. stuff like that. And just like when I was in Bali, I'd sit there having a few beers on the beach and you'd set up the time lapse thing and you go, you look at it afterwards and you just go, wow, like after a sunset. And then it was really, uh, when was it? 2017 or 16, maybe. Yep. Um, one of my, one of my good mates and his partner at the time, now his wife, were traveling around Indonesia and they're, they're into photography as well. I wasn't into photography at the time, but I just loved what they were doing and seeing them taking these beautiful photos of where they were and their travels and everything like that. And I was going over there a bit later in the year to Bali and I caught up with them and I had a really good talk to him. And um, I then come home after that and my brother was studying photography at the time as well. Okay. And I said, find us a good beginner's camera that I could use with a good all-round lens. He found me one, and as soon as I got it, I didn't put it down. Yeah, no. I literally, every night, I was on the computer watching YouTube videos. <laughs> Not about composition, because I think, for me, composition come natural, like just yeah. that leading line, and as more so the settings of the camera, what you got it, like that side of it more than anything, and the processing part of it in Lightroom. Yeah, sure. Um, so, like, composition-wise wasn't an issue. It was more the process of everything else with it. So, like, the settings for a camera, how do I get that long exposure? Like, I didn't know how, how long exposure worked before. Yep. You know, so I was learning that side um, and everything like that. So it was that process of the edit and everything and the process of actually knowing how to use the camera and just – Going out every morning, doesn't matter if it's a sun. I wasn't even thinking of colourful sunrises then. I just wanted to go and shoot sunrises. Yeah, sure. Just a beautiful light. Um, and that's what just got, like, I just it was just that passion. And as I was saying earlier off camera is that that rush you get. Yep. And you just, you know, even like back then I wasn't even planning. I'd just go down the beach or go down to some rocks and shoot, but just seeing what, 
like, you know, looking at what you just captured on the back of a camera and you go, well, that's amazing. Like, and it just makes you feel good and everything like yeah, that. And then yeah. obviously you take to the next step and you chase those sunrises and that's just one thing leads to another, really, doesn't it? Yeah, so, right. So for, for those that don't know the area around where you live, you know, can you give us a bit of a, a description? And Yeah. So how, how, does, about- how does that shape what, what you do, you know? Um, well, Batemans Bay on the south coast. I think you know, we're pretty lucky where it's lo- I'm, oh, well, I'm lucky where it's located. Um, pretty much, I'd say anywhere from Shellhaven Heads to Eden, it's yep. national park. You know, yeah, so yeah. like so it's all pristine mostly. It's yeah. all pristine, and it's, and it's can't get built out. It's not like the north coast where you probably do see more of it getting built out. Yeah, and everything like that. But um, for me, the ocean's always been a thing. Like it's just the ocean. You know, it gives you that. Even you'd get it. It's just that weightlessness, like just that freedom yeah. and everything like that, that. You know, being in the ocean or or near it. I don't. I could never not live near it. I'm 200 meters to the beach. You know, like I just, oh. <laughs> I couldn't think of anywhere. You know, like I couldn't. It just would. You know, that's who it is. It's just that happiness. I suppose it brings you. Yeah, great. Uh, but like, just yeah, I think that all about nature. Type, you know, like that. So much nature, you know, unsport spots here. That's who makes me in my photography. I don't want – I just want to be that only person there type thing and enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, You'd be, be pretty lonely there at the moment, I reckon. The, yeah, well, well my dog's locked down. Well, I always get the you – know, off the Sydney photographers especially or just Sydney people or wherever, like, you know, if they're from yeah. a city-based community – they go, where is everyone on the beaches? And I said, well, it's the middle of summer. It's 5.30 in the morning. Everyone's in bed. Yeah, that's I'll right. Be in, everyone's out. Well, other other than the, the surfers that are there every morning at 6.30 anyway, you know. Yeah, well, like that's what I mean. Like who's – like I've like i got, you know, 80-odd you know, something beaches to choose from. That's it. And, yeah. they're, all, and they're all drivable in at sunrise. Yeah. So and in it's like, there's only a, only a few thousand people around, so, you know. Yeah. You know, everyone's in bed. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and if it's winter, it's too cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, and I think that just having so much nature that is accessible, you know, like to go to a beach that you just want to be the only person at. Yeah. Even yeah. in the middle of summer, there's always those spots. So, yeah, I think that's what. There's a, quite a few little beaches down there that are kind of off the beaten track where you've got to. You you got to hike a little bit to get to them through yeah. through the through the park. You know, there's a there's a place. You know, um, I think it's just north of Tarthra. There, there's about three or four beaches. You've yeah. got to park about a k and a half to two k walk to yeah. get to them. Um, yeah, yeah. Davey told me about those ones. I know those ones. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, they they're literally just. Almost untouched, you know. Well, that's what, yeah, that's it. You know, there's um, there's a place I won't say the name, but like there's a place here near town, and I go there all the time for sunrise. So yeah, yeah. But there's one spot of national park where there's about seven or eight beaches. Yep. And it's one after another, so you can go to any one of them you want. Yeah. But they're just there, and they haven't been touched. Yeah. You know, so like it's, I remember going to them as kids. Yep. But, you know, being able to go now and having a drone to – drone's the best photo equipment you could have down here for that co- our coastline. Yeah. Like a camera just doesn't do it justice in the sense of green landscapes type thing. So um, it's just amazing, like, just, you know, you can see them all line up, the beaches after each other, and you just go kind of, – I sit there sometimes and just go, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Like I, I'm still blowing away at nearly forty years old. So. Yeah. But then, I mean, you've also got quite a lot of uh, interest and stuff around the hinterland as well. You know, there's, you know, you you go up around uh, the the mountains up behind Batemans or Maruya and whatever. You know, and you got the yeah. um, the, the the forest. I mean, yeah, there's been a fair chunk of logging up there, and and the fires haven't done it any favors yeah. either recently. But uh, uh, we might we um, might touch on that as yeah. as you from down there uh, yeah. a little bit later, but um, you know the the there's just so many spots you can go. You know you never 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 run yeah. out. 
Oh, I just like even like I go out to um, Depot Beach into the rainforest and that there. That was all burnt out during the fires, but now it's. I love going back out there now and seeing the progress. You know, yeah. so uh, just like stuff like that. Yeah. So, and like like you said, you got the mountains, and they just there's one spot at Nelligan there just behind the bay. I've yep. done a couple of photos there, but it's nice because the mountains are there. You get the bridge going across, the river running underneath, and you got those layers. You know, yeah, so like that's, yeah. that's just nice like that. Maria, because it's a floodplain, then you got the big mountains up the back there. Um, it's no New Zealand, but it's, you know, it's still yeah. nice, still yeah. something, you know, nice to have. I don't shoot it enough, definitely. I'm more of a sunrise. I don't don't really particularly enjoy a sunset. So, yeah, no um, worries. So what, what, what did you do when you sort of decided to make a go of it as as a professional photographer you know you i mean you got your locksmith on the side but um yep. you know, the photography stuff's obviously uh a big passion too so how, how did you make that decision to get into it and do it a bit more than just as a a, a standard yeah. hobby yeah it all starts with the prints i suppose you could say well yep. that's where that, that's the commercial side you could that's where that's you turn starting to turn into that I don't, still don't call myself a professional, but it's more so that well, you are when you're making money off it, I suppose. So, well, that's it. Someone's paying you to do it. And- yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. So, like, I was obviously starting prints, selling prints first, and then obviously the more you evolve in using your camera, because uh, like a lot of people see my drone stuff, and that's all they see. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've got my other page where I post all camera stuff. Yep. You know, so like I've just started that, just more so I've got these beautiful photos I want to share. So like, you know, that's where I put that. But, yeah, so they're obviously more evolved with, you know, shooting and then obviously, you know, people ask you to do little jobs here, little jobs there, like lifestyle photos or whether it's portrait photos. Um, and then I really narrowed down what side of the commercial I wanted to do. Yep. And it was that lifestyle type photography, not portraits like family photos and stuff like that yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. Really, some more lifestyle tour- and uh travel and tour- tourism that sort of thing tourism yeah. Stuff. yeah that's it so you know and i think my my photos really are that tourism style of photo anyway and i enjoy shooting that yeah uh, and i think that's the biggest thing too Green, is, is you've you've got to enjoy it you know, oh absolutely if you go out doing commercial wedding photos and you don't like taking photos of weddings there's no point doing it yeah, no, well, that's, yeah, so, that's, that's definitely me. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's, I, I don't enjoy wedding, doing weddings at all. I don't, I don't wedding. enjoy going to weddings at all. <laughs> I, I don't mind when the beers are on, on tap. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's but, probably uh, the best part of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly right, mate. That's exactly right. But, yeah, so, yeah, just transitioning to just time. Time was time was it, really. And then people, you know, the more you hone your skill into, the better the quality of photos come the more confident you have of that photo that you can produce for a client in that industry of tourism or lifestyle. Um, and, yeah, so then just one thing, and I'm lucky enough down here, I've built up a reputation, I suppose, through my Facebook page and everyone knows, you know, I've been pretty much born and bred here. Yeah. Everyone knows that there's a lot, of, a lot of people probably got prints of mine. Sure. And then they start seeing my work around town, whether it's for a restaurant or a tourism company or the local tourism board, you know, like Yerbadella Tourism, which I've done yep. a lot of work for last year after the fire. So, you know, so just I found out what I wanted to do and enjoyed it at the same time. So, um, and I think that's just, that's the key to it is enjoying it and actually just find what you enjoy doing and also just you've got to have quality in your work. Yeah. You know, the amount of people that I, and I don't want, I'm not, a lot of people think they're photographers. We know, you know, we, we see it all the time and they'll flog off their prints for 10 bucks. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's, that's not having, you know, a print cost you nine bucks or whatever like that. It's not having pride in your work. Yeah. You know, I think you've got to value your work. Um, and everything like that. And it's, and it's not being greedy. I think it's just honesty more than anything is that be honest with yourself. You know, if you 
look at the quality of Australia tourism photos or, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah, there's you, an expectation that you 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 know what you're doing, you know how to how to use light, you know yep. how to, know how to get the process and the color, you know yep. just just the way they like it for that sort of brochure style. Look. Well, that's it's that's the brief they give you. We want we yeah. we want to have a golden hour lifestyle type photos. Oh, yep. I know I can only shoot these photos. I can't shoot them during the day. Yep. I've got to shoot them. Sunrise or sunset, that's it. Yeah, no, none yeah. of those funky blue hour astro shots. <laughs> uh, I, I see some of the stuff that some people, tourism pages post. Yep. And I'm like, um, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you're down, like, you've got quality content from so many other photographers. Yeah. I know you've got to share it around, and I understand that, but you've got a brand to uphold as well. Yeah, and that's that, and that's it. And it's I, I think that's a, that's a really important part of it is understanding the value of the brand and the damage you can do to a brand by you know a few sort of jarring images that just don't fit. And well, that's it. You know, we get a brief, and I always want feedback. If I do a job for a customer, I'm always wanting feedback just to know yep. whether they love the photos or they hate the photos or whatever like that. And yeah, like I just did a project three days last week because there is a five-star cabin place here. The fires went through this place, but they really haven't got back up on their feet running since the fires. Yeah. And um, they got us in and I did a heap of lifestyle photos and made a couple of you know, four or five videos for them. Yep. And they gave me feedback on the photos after they looked through them and they said, we love them. You know, and I, that's what you want to hear and you know that. It's you know they're a bit old school, but you know you've given them the photos that bit of a modern twist. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so and they can help them. That's what I I, I want to be proud that I know I can help them. Yeah. And the big brand. big part of it is is knowing knowing that brand, but also knowing their market and yep. helping them understand you know how to reach that market in different ways as well you know yeah. and things things like drones and and so forth have really opened yeah. up and well that's it drones you, and you, you rarely, rarely ever see a, a, a tourism shoot where they uh, other than still brochure style things but well, drone. an ad that is, hasn't got a drone shot in it you know no, like, well, like, you know like you nearly say a lot of them now are like is like especially coastal towns because you want to show off the beaches. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. What's the best way to show off a beach? A drone. Yeah, get an aerial. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, I yeah, I just think yeah, you got to understand the brand and understand, you know, even if you ask them asking the brand for a couple of samples so that you know that you're on the right path. You know, just Absolutely. you know they might have had a job done previously or something and. They can just fill you in a bit, and it just makes it easier for you and easier for you to communicate with the customer. Yep, definitely. So you mentioned the uh, the fires that came through. I don't think there'd be too many listeners that weren't aware that pretty much the the south coast of Australia, <laughs> almost all of it went <laughs> up in uh, in, in the uh, the fires in uh, the end of um, uh, twenty nineteen. Um, you know, where, where were you in relation to the fires? How close did they get? And sort of what what did you see? You know, what what was the feeling around town and everything about um, know, the aftermath? Yeah, so for the fires, for me, they started twenty eighth of November, twenty nineteen. Yeah, that was the first night of the fires. Um, so I got the first photo. It's all in my catalogue. I know it's all dated. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just went up to the local lookout in town. You could see it over the over the couple of um, mountain ridges over and that. And it's probably about uh, it's probably about twenty k's out at that stage. That was the first night. It was a storm come over and lit the fire. That's what it was. Yeah. And I'll run you through that. I'll run you through from when it started to when it ended. How's that sound? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> good. Um. So then, yeah, so then a few days it started fizzling more. Then the fire took took the north uh, northeast track and that's when it hit up, went up towards Bawley Point and got yep. to right to the back of Bawley Point there. And I've got photos from here in the bay and the big pyro cloud up there. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Blue, blue skies here. <clears throat> it was just blowing dead west. Um, and it just rolled, it rolled up to the back door, back door of Bawley Point. So yeah, just this big uh, grey 
grey brown ball of uh, 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 smoke. It's and ash. Yeah, what, yeah, it was unbelievable. Like clear blue skies, but just this. It looked like an atomic bomb had gone off up there. Yeah. To be honest. Um, so then that same day, uh, oh, was it the same day? No, it was a couple. Of, that was like the third, I think, maybe the second or something like that. Yep. Then a couple of days later, on the fourth, I think it was the fourth of uh, November, or December. Was it the fourth? Yeah, fourth of December. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's when it went through Ball, uh, Pebbly Beach, and down there, down there. Me and a mate and another two mates, we went out in the boat that night to Pebbly Beach and Depot, and we pitch black when we went out there. But I've got photos, and it looks like lava coming down, down the hill. Like yeah. it was just um, it was like we're in a war zone, but in a boat, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, and then we we nearly got lost. We couldn't find our way out because of the smoke, but we got out eventually. Oh, yeah. So that was fine. Um, and then. Two days later, the fire was coming for Bateman's Bay. Yeah. It was like my sister got evacuated. My friends all got evacuated. All the husbands in that stayed and they with the fire, with the utes and that, with the water tanks on the back. And I went and helped them. I went and sat up with a mate at his dad's caravan park that they own. Yep. And then the, we got a phone call off the fireys at South Dara saying the fire's taken off at North Dara's, which is across the lake. And he, lucky enough, my mate's daddy's got a 10,000 litre water tanker for these caravan parks. So we've gone out and that, we've got the fire pumps on the back and we've got out there and the fire was only 100 metres from us or something like that. And the CLE's changes come straight through and turned the fire right, wrapped it, made it wrap around the back of the caravan park. So it saved us. Wow. And I don't know if you've seen that photo of the headland burning I took. Uh, yeah, I've seen that one, yeah. Yeah, so that was that night. Wow. So we're sitting there having a couple of beers and, you know, every half an hour we're going up listening, uh, putting out spot fires. But that, during that time I got that photo of my mate standing there with the headland burning. So, yeah, because a, a lot of people don't understand how bushfires or wildfires work sometimes uh, where the fire front itself can be... And, and in this particular situation, yeah, you know, it could have been four or five kilometres away, but the it's embers that are actually flying through the air and then dropping yeah. into dry grass or other trees and whatever, and the tops of the tree or the you know the grass underneath will yeah. start going up in a in a spot yeah. fire, as you said. Oh, you know. And you I can, see. as I say, you can be literally you know four or five k's from the fire yeah, front. Yeah, ten k's away. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that's how, that's what happened on we we'll get to New Year's Day now, New Year's Eve, sorry. Um, that's how that all, you know, like it was just that wind that just that's why I got to the coast so quick. Yeah. Because of the spot fires. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fires for me it ended up about three hundred meters from home. Wow. Which is in uh, for me it's not close. Because it, I seen it wrap around mates' houses and they were, they were there. So trying, they saved their houses doing it. And, yeah. Um, so were you, yeah, were you evacuated at all? Or did no, no, I stayed at my place and mum and dad were away too. I was supposed to be in Hobart for a wedding, my cousin's wedding. Right. On New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day, but I refused to go go to it because it was on New Year's Eve. Yeah. <laughs> so I was lucky because they were away. So I was going between mum and dad's house and my house, and which they only live 500 metres on top of a hill and that, which overlooks the whole bay and everything like that. But I seen helicopters picking up water at the, down the road from the front of their house, yep. and dropping on the um, the sand dunes at the front of um, a little wildlife park just down the road. Wow! You know, so like, it was at it was at the beaches in town. You know, like yeah. it was crazy. So like I got like that day. You know, like I think back on it and going, I should have been out at Mogo when it come through Mogo to take photos to document this, but yeah. For me, I'm a person that's going to put my camera down, and I'm there to go and help. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to. Yeah, know, it's not. It's not something that I. Th I think you know you could just sort of stand by and not not help somebody. No, nah, especially yeah, it's especially with what the devil like. New, I went out the next morning. I like, said, so New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve fire come and gone. Five hundred odd houses burnt or something in the area, down to the ground. Um, the next day was. Like apocalypse, yeah. It was still, it was eerie, full of smoke. 
no, uh, what, we didn't have any power. Yep. Didn't have any phone service. Yep. Phone towers were all out too. Um, for some reason, I just knew, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. I had stuff in the fridge, like, you know, whatever I needed. And um, I went over and seen my sister to make sure they were all right and her husband and that and everything like that. Yeah. The lineup to the service station, I've never seen a lineup so long. People trying to get fuel to get yeah. out, but they, they can't go anywhere. Yeah, well, most, most of the roads got closed at the time. We're, we're locked in. Yeah. We couldn't go to camp, we couldn't go north, we couldn't go south. Yeah. So, and then um, I found out through the grapevine just by speaking to people, one of my mates lost two of his houses that day. Oh, wow. One, at, one in Batemans Bay, one in Malakuta the same yep. day. Yeah. He lost both of them. So, wow. Uh, he lost the one here saving his mum's house. Yeah. So, you know, and I, we still had, to, I spent five days with him after that because the fires were in the gullies next to his mum's house because she's on a river and there's, Heap of gullies. I spent five days with him while we just, you know, cleared the bush around the house, watched the fire because we couldn't get hoses into the water, like into the because they're in the gullies. Yeah, yeah. There's one day we had probably about a hundred loads of water dropped on the fire and, and it got it out. It put it out. Oh wow! So, um, it was a, yeah, it was an experience. And then another was it three weeks later it hits Maria. Yeah, which is only a minute south. Another mate of mine down there, I said, that fire looks like it's going to your house. And he goes, it is. And I said, who are you there with? Because I'm not at my house. I met my sister and my brother-in-law's house because they're in Noosa. Oh, wow. So yeah. He was by himself, so I went and helped him. So um, it really, I, I loved how the community just come together after that. Yeah. It was something like I've never, I've never seen that before. It just showed you it doesn't matter what race or nationality, whatever you are, everyone just come together as one and was there for each other. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, fr- friends of ours, they had moved to Cabago yep. um, about four or five months before uh, November, so before, well, before the fires were even, you know, a, yep. a, a, a thought. And... Um, yeah, you know, so they they sort of got themselves just just about established down there, and you know what the fire did down there, it just went, you know, it took out their next door neighbour and on the left hand side, and left their place and the place next door, and then took out the place uh, on the right hand side, two doors down, and you know a few other a lot of other places in the town. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but the thing that uh, they were saying, we we uh, were down that way uh, in December last year, uh, the wife and I, and we caught up with them, and um, you know they were saying, you know, it was just amazing how the community had sort of got together and started to make decisions about how they were going to rebuild, and you know. Yep. So forth. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear your experience of that because you know it was it was fascinating hearing hearing what they'd had to say. Yeah, there was one particular one particular person. I was Matthew Hatcher. Yeah, um, he really just took it upon himself to just start getting shit together. You know, like getting stuff together. Like people. We couldn't get supplies down here too. Like, you know, so that's hard to – people don't understand that side of it too. Yeah, yeah. Matt just got together and ravaged around the, and the community come to him. He, like, he, he was that person you went to if you could help out, you know, instead of like going, oh, where do I look type thing, everyone knew to go to Matt. Yeah. And still to the day, he's still doing stuff, you know. It's like – because we're still not recovered from the bushfires, like, you know, from the, the community itself because we haven't had that break to kind of reboot because yeah, COVID current, coronavirus has really, you know, not helped yeah. with that recovery in any way, shape or form and sort no. of made it yeah. real hard, particularly on the tourism in- industry, you know, down oh, there. Mate, it's so – that's all like the car- the van parks and the tourism tourism operators and everything like that, it's – it's gonna, yeah, take, and that's take a big effort to get to get it back. Yeah, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, while watching season, you know, out of Naruma at this stage cancelled, isn't it? 
Yeah, you know, that's pretty a, much. That's the biggest, you know, person to person like quota. Like they go and do three runs a day. Yeah, yeah. that's over. You know, so it's. Yeah, so Matt Hatcher, he was definitely a person that, from a community point of view, just everyone went to him. He ended up, I think someone opened up a big warehouse for him down Maruya so everyone could just take goods there. When yep. the roads finally opened up, all the donations from Canberra and Sydney were starting to come down with like with like pallets of water, shampoo, toothpaste, or anything like that. Everything was just going there. And, you, and like people, like, it wasn't people like me because I had everything still. It was the people that yeah. lost everything. You know, like, yeah, and that's they're, they're the ones that you want to help out, you know. Yeah, well, I know, like, one of my one of my best mates' brother, he lost his house that day. Yeah, and he's a poor fellow like me, and I just went through my wardrobe. He lost everything, so I just yeah. went through my wardrobe, got my shoes, got shirts, that. I had an Xbox sitting in the cupboard that I hadn't used for a year, so I just got all the games and everything for it. And so their sons had an Xbox to play. Yeah, you know, was, there you go, guys, get into it. So. It was just like that. It's just that. Just I've never seen generosity or anything like that. And then now the worst thing is with the COVID, we want to be that community, but we can't. Yeah, yeah, you can't pull That's together nice. as much as you you hope you could. Yeah. If anything, it's tearing people apart. You yeah. know, because everyone's got a different opinion, haven't they? So it's yeah, like it. <laughs> you know, like it's each to their own, but it's it's fra- it's. It's what it is. It's human nature. It's everyone's going to have an opinion, and then things like this happen. Yeah, you know? definitely. It's sad, but it's the truth. So, what? What about you know photography through that period? I mean, obviously, you know, you're concentrating on community and trying to help people and whatever. You know, were you were you also trying to document what was going on a bit? And um, well, the day after the fires, before I went out and helped me mate, I went. I wanted to capture. People. I wanted to capture – No, I didn't want to capture burnt, burnt houses or nothing, but what I wanted yeah, to yeah. capture was what I could of the devastation. Yep. Um, I drove straight out to Malua Bay um, about 10 o'clock in the morning after I went and seen my sister and there's people, cars and that all down at um, Malua Bay Beach where that about a 1,000 people were the day before. Yep. Um, just got photos of everyone down there. There's horses on the beach, cars. Yeah. Everything like that. And just seeing like and there's one still comes back every now and then. They blocked off the road to the club and all these houses got lost down there. Yep. And a lot of older people too, like so seventies yeah, yeah. and eighties. And I think there was a lady from the SES there or council or and she'd already gone down and marked off what houses are burned, what houses were there. And the lineup of people going there, and I still remember this old couple there, and saying, "Sorry, your house is gone." And yeah. there we go. I just, yeah, it's, the stuff like that. I didn't capture any of that, but I went down to the beach, and like, there was a car parked on the beach. Like he pretty much ran away from the fire and he snapped his axle doing it. Oh wow! And then I, so I just captured like the cars burn out. Um, and there was just a bit of an ongoing thing maybe for the next two weeks, just going to Mogo and yep. just taking photos of burnt signs and stuff that, you know, stuff like that that can connect saying the location, like locate meeting like, you know, Mogo Goldfields or yeah, yeah. stuff like that. That's what, And then it kind of re, I rebooted after that because we had the floods. Yeah, that's right because... Uh, what was it about three or four weeks, five weeks or so after the fires? I think it was. Or... I'd say two weeks. Two weeks was it? Oh, wow. Two, two weeks. Yeah. I reckon. It, it, yeah, two... I mean, it put the fires out. It but... Put the fires out overnight. <laughs> so it was, I, and I like I went out to Nelligan and got photos of the caravan park underwater. Yeah. Wow. I, I think I put a thing up on my Facebook or on my Instagram story, just saying what a context. You know, context of two different. That's Australia we live in, isn't it? That's in exactly it. Yeah, photos. it's always been known as the land of extremes, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Fire and flood. It's like it was. Uh, it was unbelievable. And then I think uh, then was it then three weeks after the floods, Corona. Yeah. So, but from there, uh, that's it. I think that was the best way to capture. Just reset myself, and yeah, and then yeah, just try and get back to normal. I suppose. And, Bring that little bit of beauty back into 
you know, to show off the beauty that's still there because the way the media, you know, we felt too that our whole coast was burnt, so it means it was it was stuffed, you know, like it's gone. Yeah, yeah. And I had to realise, you know, it's so devastating at the time to show it. I've still got to show the beauty that is there still. Yeah. It will come back. It's just a matter of time. And it's just we've got to realise that and, and try and put that across to people to give them, give them hope, yep. whether they've lost their house or, um, you know, it's a pro, you know, that's just nature. So we're, and we're nature. So why, you know, just to try and ease them a bit, you know, so. Yeah, gotcha. And gotcha. I did get, I got a lot of good feedback on it. Like I've got private messages of people saying, you don't understand how much this has helped. So I'm glad that it has. So yeah. being able to see it helps you process and understand yep. it. And, yep. You know, put a, put a frame around it. Uh, you know, metaphorically speaking. Oh yeah, no, that's it. And you know, like it's, you know, like where the headlands burnt all out. There's a beach there, and you're going to take a nice photo of the beach and a nice sunrise. It's still a beautiful, like you know. Yeah. Even though there might be a few a few trees. Uh, yeah. That, you know. Won't won't recover, but the majority yeah. of the trees and and the undergrowth and everything recovers really yeah. really quickly. That's it. Like what did I? The best way that my mate's dad said to us when I took that headland burning, he goes, "There's so much devastation, but there's still so much beauty." Yeah, yeah. Which is just perfect, you know. Even when you see the headland burning, that's what he said. It's actually beauty yeah. to see. Like it, it's kind of weird to say it, and people understand it, but so. Yeah, it's it's uh, I guess it, it, it's and it's not just the drama of it. I think yeah, you're right. It, it's seeing that at night and seeing the glow and seeing the, yep. the the fire sort of coming through that area. Yeah, it would be you know beautiful in a in a quite a quite a different way to what you you might think about it. Well, that's it. And like those photos I took on that particular day, the start of December, then. I took them and I uploaded them on my computer when I got home after we finished up out there. And I was content. I was not. I was if and are about posting them on Facebook because I didn't want them to. I didn't want people to get them upset and emotional with them seeing them. And I posted them and I I spoke to I spoke to a couple of other photographers probably before like that I speak to Ben Max one of them. Yep. And he said, "Ah, oh, share them, share them." And I said, "I so I did." And I didn't understand the response I was going to get. It was unbelievable. I think it was nearly a million people seen them on Facebook, wow. on my page. Yeah. Uh, had an interview with Al Jazeera. New York Times used it, I think, as well. Wow. Telegraph, Telegraph used the photos numerous yeah. times. So, like, it was, I was grateful because a lot of people go, thank you for sharing them with us because they – a lot of people didn't understand what was going on. You know, like they understand there's fires, but they don't understand the extent of them as well. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, the the the, the time that it's taking to sort of, you know, go through that processing and, you know, for, for some of the communities, the healing and whatever, you know, again, I was talk, talking to uh, our mates down in um, Cabago, uh Oh, it's probably about four or five weeks ago, you know, and they they just sort of now. I mean, four or five weeks ago, they probably had a little bit more hope than they currently do with the yeah. you know the the lockdowns are, yeah. that that are happening. But um, yeah, they, they were sort of looking forward, hopefully, to a, a good summer season this year, and that now doesn't look like it's really going to be uh, that great. But you know, uh, it depends on. Uh, Depends on what happens, but um, I think you know that that area in particular has really taken its knocks over the last uh, last couple of years, and um, you know really really deserves a, a better go. I think, but um, yeah, yeah, such life, unfortunately, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's it. Unfortunately, there's uh, that, and that's the thing. There's not not much anyone can really do about it. You've just got to get on with just life and uh, make the best of it as you can. Just but yeah, and I think that what gets to the, the people that are still feeling the effect, like mentally or emotionally, or, or you know financially, um, it's that as soon as COVID hit, the fires were forgotten about. 
you know, whether, you know, it's, uh, that's the feeling that they got. You know, the media obviously just moves on to the next thing. It's yeah, just well, the that's, that's, that's the media, you know. The, I was speaking to a journalist today and she's, she's, doing a, she's doing her master's, her last project of a master's degree or something like that. She asked if she could use that headland photo. Yep. It's just, it's just for her project and she's going to, and it's about how the, because it's very sentimental to her down here. She's from Canberra originally. She holidayed out mm-hmm. at Doris all the time. She lives in Sydney now. She works for one of the major papers. Um, and she said she feels for us down here because we've been forgotten about. Yeah. You know, wants to. Well, that's the thing. Make- you don't you don't really hear any media stories, you know, up, up until recently what, what we were talking about before now that you've got a couple of cases down there in uh, in Batemans itself, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, I don't. I don't recall in the last sort of six months, maybe even longer, seeing a story about anything on the south coast in in Sydney news. Ah, no, no. The only thing I seen just the other day was the local member for. Uh, she used to be the Bigger Valley Mayor. Oh yeah, mayor. yeah. Um, so she's in the Labor Party or something now. It's a federal government. Yeah. And she's bringing up the issue about the like the the conversation in Parliament about the fires, like we're about. Like, People feel like they've been forgotten about. And someone on the Liberal bench jumped up, this lady, and she said, yeah, but that was 18 months ago. Oh, and I was like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, I know you, it's 18 months ago, but we haven't had a break since. That's it. You, you know, they're, they're the sort of people that do need to actually get on the ground there and, and have a good look. Exactly. That, exactly and that's, I just, like, I've got so much respect for Andrew Constance for what he went through himself, but also how he led our community as well. You yeah, know, like, yeah. you could, I couldn't have asked for a better bloke, to be honest. You know, like it's just, I'm not a pol- political person at all, but just in that, you know, seeing him tell it, pretty much show it, show the Australia and the world how we were all feeling at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but, you know, um, yeah, I can't see, yeah, it'll, st- it'll just be lost now forever. Like until there's a big reunion or something, you know, you know, New Year's, every New Year's Eve now for us is a reunion for the fires. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, lost houses and, yeah. you know, those, and those people that tragically died down in Cabaga. Yeah. You know, so like that's, you know, it's a, it's a very easy date to remember, isn't it? Oh, too right. Yeah. So what, um, I guess, you know what? What? What do you see as uh, being something that you can do, or that other photographers could do to, you know, to rectify that situation? I know, you know, with lockdown, it's a bit tough getting people down there and and visiting. But um, you know, what what sort of things though? There, there are other ways of doing it. And I yeah. mean, one one of the things that I've thought of, and they, this sort of came out of a conversation with uh, a mate of mine. I know a lot of. I know a lot of Sydney photographers have shot down the south coast. You know, well, and, yeah, as we were saying before, you know, you've got the iconic spots down there, Horsehead Rock, Camel Rock, yep. you know, Glasshouse Rocks and everything, you know, that everybody knows. But there's a lot of others that people don't know. Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure you could probably put together a pretty good selection of, uh, of shots, put them up for auction, you know, yeah. as points and uh, make some money and, and somehow send it down there, you know? Yeah, like I think I'd love to, like I'm, I've spoken to someone, I actually mean Davey Rogers spoke about this together. Last time we were together and that was the last time we actually were, had, had a beer together. And we'd love to actually get down to Bermagui is um, like a photography weekend. Yep. So like you break it up into three groups or something like that. One goes to Camel, one goes to Glass House, one goes down to Mimosa or, you know, down that way type thing. Yeah. You know? And actually and have a guest speaker maybe or something like that too and, yeah. you know, and I think if we can all – and it's, it won't be just – it would be for the whole region, like whether it's from – you know, Davey's got part of the Tartha and Bega community on part of the Babins Bay and Maria community. So, you know, funds can be split up pretty easy and, you know, help we can help everyone out. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it also just a lot of photographers, you know, haven't been down here too. So this might give well, them that's it. Yeah, there's a lot of too. So still on their list, you know. 
Yeah, and I think if you can, I think that'd be just a great experience and a great get together once we come out of all this COVID stuff, you yeah. know, because I can only imagine you guys up there wanting to get out of Sydney and go and shoot down here or shoot up the North Coast or the Blue oh, Mountains. Anywhere, anywhere. But I mean, I'd love to shoot Sydney, let alone because. Yeah, well, there you I, go. So, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't go more than five k's from where I live, and I live an hour away from the beach. So you know, for uh, me. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I would have got an exemption to move. <laughs> but yeah. um, I, think, I, I, I think that would be a great way to do it because you could build that. It's that tourism industry, so you book out places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, then you can, you know, you and anyone that's coming on it and, like, understands it like yourself, you know, you might have to buy, buy a $100 ticket to see the guest speaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like it might be a three hundred fifty four hundred dollar weekend. You know, it's a guest speaker accommodation. You know, then you you know everything like that. But that's for something to think about. But it's more so like yeah, you know the money's going to the right places. It's worth it. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, and it's, it's it's interesting. I've actually uh, I'm I'm booked to uh, talk to Davey in in the near future. So uh, I might uh, I might hit him up about the idea and uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see well, if we can get yeah. something going. Yeah, I only spoke to Davey the other day. And didn't uh, we? Ha- we haven't spoken about it, but just you saying that tonight, bring it back to mind. And it, the more I think about that, would just be a really great. I think that'd be an awesome idea. Yeah. Because you know, even if you get thirty photographers down here with a guest speaker, or fifty photographers down here, and yeah. you can split up into five different groups or something like that, and you know, whether one someone goes and shoots Tilba. You know, or something yeah. like the Rock Hills there, or something like that. Yeah. And you know, then I I might be able to take a group of people that want to go and do drone stuff. Davey takes a landscape, and then you might have some lifestyle. You know, just to mix it up a bit. You know, like yeah, yeah. Even, you know, even for anyone that wants to step outside the box a bit and try something new. You know, yeah. like whether it's um, shooting a, a a model on a beach or something like that. You know, so. Well, I'll I, I tell I, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm, I'm going to put the call out here that anyone listening to this uh, that's interested in helping getting on board with this, um, you know, hit either myself or Josh or Davey Rogers up yeah. and uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to talk to Davey about that. But <laughs> Yeah, I'll maybe mention that to him before he gets. But I, I just, yeah. Davey bring it up and I think if you, and have a guest speaker like. Yeah, I think that would be brilliant, yeah. I think if, you, if we had like a. I don't know, we might be pushing for the limits here, but you know, get a Ray Martin down as a guest speaker and if it's for a good cause, he might do it for nothing, you yeah. know, so because he loves his photography. and Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But then, you know, you might, you know, like I know a couple of like just ocean photographers that are really well-renowned as well, you know, like so that's another scheme. Like I love my ocean, for, like jumping in the water with me housing. Yeah. and Because that, that's just a different art in itself. And seeing there's play, people like Ray Collins, um, you got uh, yeah, and there's a few others up in Wollongong Way and Aladala and that, and they're yep. really, really awesome at what they're doing. If it's for that cause, I mean, like you know, for a cause, I think everyone will be getting on board for a weekend for doing photography and drinking beers. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. You know, like we can, we could like you know the Birmingham Hotel, um, which sits there looking back at Mount Gooligar and yep. Everything like that, and it's just a beautiful sunset spot. But you know, like you could have it there. Like I'm, I've, Davey and I have spoken to them in the past. They're, they're awesome people. They'd be willing to host it. You know, yeah. like I can see. You know, so um, you know, so that brings that tourism side to town. It gets people down, spending money. You know, you might come down and spend two weeks down here, or a week down here, instead of just the two days that the thing might go for. You know, so yeah, yeah. it's kind of you know, if we can, I think bringing people to the area is to go. Totally. Okay. Well, I, I'll I'll certainly uh, put the word around and uh, let, let's see see if we can't um, get something yeah. done. Yeah. No, I think it'd be awesome to do. And also, it's also gets you, but also gets you to meet other like minded people. Totally. Yeah. You know, I I don't like I don't have that here. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it'd be awesome to have a big group of people come down and and um, you know shoot down here and just bounce off each other, you know, because yeah. everyone's going to be coming out of hiatus and 
everyone's going to be very raw to go. So yeah, every, everyone's going to be very uh, rusty and out of practice with their shooting skills too. I think uh, we'll give you might, two. Might have, to do, might have to do a few uh, tutorials. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a link to a YouTube tutorial first and warm up. <laughs> yeah. So you, you were talking about uh, your you printing um, and that sort of thing. What are you what what are you doing in terms of prepping your images and you know sorting that out? Is there a local mob that you get that done through, or do you do it through one of the one of the bigger ones in Sydney or Melbourne? Yeah, so in regards to the processing side. Every photo that I edit and put up on Instagram is print ready. Yep. Um, so that's pretty easy. It's, I think that's just common practice you should do. Um, so yeah, then because I got I, I don't sell many through Instagram or anything. I sell it all through Facebook. Yeah, right. I sell a lot. That's where I sell everything. Yeah, you know, people still buy off Instagram, not an issue, but ninety like percent I'd say comes through Facebook. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, and in regards to it, I just use FrameShop. In um, Sydney, yeah, in Roselands, I, I use yeah. them myself. Yeah. yeah, I've set up a really good um, system with them. Oh, you know, like just I've used them for four years now. You know, um, yep. I spoke to Muhammad there a heap and that, and he gets what I he gets understands me, and you know, it's beautiful. Um, I've had to cut the frames rock up where they've broken glass in them. Yeah, yeah. They, bang, they're onto it straight away. They'll send me out a new one straight away. Fantastic. Yeah, so I just upload that because I, for me, I send a lot of stuff interstate to expats, I suppose, at Batemans Bay or the Yuba or the South Coast. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm sending stuff to WA, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, everywhere, Canberra a lot, um, and then a few down here. So it's, it's just smart, I think, smart business to do that. I don't do enough prints to have my own printer. I probably do have enough do enough prints to be honest, but it's if I can just log on to my computer, put the put the order in, put their address in, get the email request when it's sent out, put it into the commerce store saying yours has been sent. Here's your tracking number. Easy done. You're not double handling. Yeah, it's all done for you. Yeah. The only stuff I do double handle is the stuff I send internationally. Um, because I don't send internationally at frame shop, so yeah, right, right. So I just get it. I just get it sent to me, and then I just send it off from the local post office box. Yeah. So, but you yeah, know, they're 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 awesome. There, they're really good quality. The framework, turnaround time, um, yeah, they're they're awesome. Couldn't yeah. ask for a better. Life. Have you, have you I, done any uh, done any acrylics with them? I've, I've got a. I've done about four or five acrylics. I've done last year, and uh, they, I, I absolutely love them. The way the way that they finish them, and the way that they, um, you, know, you know, they they present, yep, just phenomenal. I've I've done four for one customer. Yep, and it got sent straight to the customer. I haven't even seen. You it. haven't seen it. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I like to be honest. I don't rarely see my work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just I, I tr it's the trust I've got in Muhammad and that at Frame Shop. Yep. Uh, the at the start when I was printing stuff, he would he would obviously print a little bit of sample to see what it printed like. That's what they all yeah. do. Um, and he would just say, oh, "It's a bit too dark. Can you just brighten it up a bit?" And then you send the file back to him, or whatever like that. Yeah, so, fantastic. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah. So I have seen some big pieces get sent here. Um, one was, yeah, one, it was a canvas actually in a raw rope okay. floating frame. Yep. And I nearly cried. It just, I was blown away by how good it looked because it was a meter, it was about a meter and a half by a meter high. So it was huge. Yeah. And look, yeah. it's a bit different seeing that compared to something that's A4. Yeah. On, on, on a screen, it's got a different feel. But yeah, you, I mean, all, all the ones, well, sorry, most of the ones that I've done in, in the acrylic, uh, I think the the largest one was one point seven five meters by right. one and a half, and yep. uh, but mostly around that one and a half to one and a half by one sort of size. Yep. Yep. And um, yeah, they're they're a real statement piece. They they they, they really make a difference to your walls. Um, yeah. yeah, it's I like I've got a couple of pieces on my because you've got my screens over there. I can't 
<laughs> I've got one there, but that's just that's just on um uh what's that? I got I got one. It's just a it's on backing board, and I just stuck oh, a yeah. bit of timber at the back of the backing board with and just that's just cheap for me to chuck on the wall at home, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, when I see them huge, like big, like that one point five, it really makes you self proud, I suppose, and makes you want to go out and do it again. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah. You know, you get you get that little bit of a buzz um, yeah. seeing it because I don't know, it's it's how you want it. <laughs> that's kind of that's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I mean, aside from anything, it's the ultimate backup as well. You know. You <laughs> Very, very unlikely, and yeah, you know, unless unless I lose my house in a fire, which you know, touch wood won't happen. But uh, you know, the, uh, the 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 way that you can sort of carry them around with you and you know keep them for life, it's uh, it, it, it's really worth doing. I think very well worth printing your own work, even if it's only yeah. for your own walls, let alone for for customers. Yeah, I, I don't do it enough. And I think the reason why I don't do it, as soon as I get one done, a mate will come up, I need a present for someone. You know, like, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. this is all I've got. And I send it off. But Yeah, I've, I've, I've given quite a few away as well, but, uh, you know. I've got a couple a couple sitting in a cardboard box ready to take out. I mean, Nen's um, birthday on Thursday, her 90th birthday. But we can't go and see her because she's in lock. We're in lockdown, obviously. So, but... um. I've got uh, one of the old Batemans Bay Bridge and just a nice little sunrise one for a room. She's um, nice big bridge ones, like a meter wide, I think it is, and it's um, yeah, it's one of the yeah, it's one of the favourite ones I've taken off that old Batemans Bay Bridge. So oh, fantastic, fantastic. So when when you let, let's say it's a, a commercial shoot, how long would you spend planning that and and then you know sort of shooting and then editing? What what yeah. Sort of time does that take up? Uh, I think once again, it gets back to that natural comes to my head, you know, working on that because of that tourism lifestyle in it, it's kind of like go with the flow and sure. just make you got to make everything look natural, like you know, not like they're posing and yeah, yeah. stuff yep. like that. So, but in regards to, I'll write a shot list down, yep. so like that job that I just did, I'll get me diary out and I'll just go out with the customer and get an understanding of exactly what they want, everything like that. Then I'll come home, write a shot list and I'll just, when I go out there to do the shoot, I'll just start crossing off, you know, and what I make sure I cover all bases um, and everything like that. Um, so that kind of, that's that process of getting to that. And obviously Weather-wise, you want to make sure the weather's perfect, how you want it to be portrayed in those photos. Yep. I know you can't always, obviously, but if you give yourself a big enough time window in regards to the client's going to be happy to work with you and everything like that, you can you can nail it pretty much. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the process after that, I'll dump all the photos onto a hard drive and then I'll just go start through and just start editing and just, I'll usually, because obviously you're shooting at different times, so obviously yep. uh, and it's going to be a bit different on each one. So, all right, I want breakfast photos, for instance. So I want that nice golden light, but I don't want it to be too sunrise, you know what I mean? So Yeah, no, I know what you but mean. Then, yeah, then you just go through those. You copy the settings for that, and then you just paste it and they make your little adjustments. Then you might you move on to the next section, just continue on. So, like, I went out the other day. Shot in the morning last Monday. Yep. Uh, come home, dumped about 800 photos and then edited 70. I've got 70 photos out of that 800 that I used. Okay. A lot of them are obviously very similar. So it's like... Yeah, yeah. Um, that, for commercial jobs, that's what you tend yeah. to do because you, you're giving them the, the shot they want and different angles and they'll they'll pick you know, the, the top five or top ten or whatever out yep. of that 70 and off you go. That's that's it. And then so then, yes, yeah, so I get that 70 edit just because I've booked out the whole day for it. I'll just might as well get a start on it. Yeah. Go back out, shoot that afternoon and then take another 500 odd photos or something like that and then got another 50 photos out of that and edited them the next day, went back out there and shot video the next day. So I won't do photo and video at the same time. Yeah, it's fair just, enough. It's just too hard to 
Yeah. Push for time. Light. Light's my biggest thing. Like, yeah, well, like I said, if somebody says gold now, you you might only have half an hour of that some days and yep, other days it. you might get an hour and a half if you're lucky. Yep. You know? that's, that's exactly right. So yeah. it's just about time management and I think with, um, with that, it's just best to concentrate on one thing and then co- like get the job, you know, then concentrate on the next thing the next day and then you just have a lot more smoother... Yeah. Comfortable, not re- rushing, you're not stressing, you know. Like, yep, I'm a one man band, I don't have another, you know. If I had, so- if I hired someone to do the video for me, yeah, yeah, yeah I could have done it, but I didn't need to, I knew I could do it over three days, yeah. So, um, and then, yes, yeah, so, and then I just, yeah, with the videos, I just with the video in regards to planning, I'll actually re- write out a shot list as well, so I'll actually have. All right, scene one, scene two, scene three. Then you know when you go to the edit, the edit's pretty much done for itself because you just got to get the time in the clips right and you're done. So yeah, cool. it's, it's a, once once you get in that rhythm of it, it's fine. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I think what that's are, what are you? Sorry, go on. That's a, I think pre-planning is your savior when it comes to commercial shoots. Definitely, I don't think you can go and wing it. And be as efficient and get the best quality product you can get for that customer if you don't plan that shot right. Yeah, it's the same with my same, and you'd do the same thing too, Rand. Is you'd go out the day before with a you know with pre planned of what shot you want, yeah, and they are becoming your best shots. Yeah, you know, you, you luck it sometimes in the sense of you go, oh, I'll just go down there and see what I can get, and you'll yeah. luck out. So, you'll some mornings a- when I go, it's I, I don't know when I get up. Where I'm going to go, yep. I know. I know that conditions, you know, particularly when conditions are going to be good all up and down the coast, it's kind yep. of like okay, just get up and pick one and go. And I yep. u- usually those days I'll try and pick somewhere where I haven't been. Yep. You know, when when you see that sort of 80, 90 percent high cloud cover yep. forecast the the night yep. before, it's kind you of like right. okay, won't matter where I go, I should be getting something, you know. That's it. Yeah, it's just. Um, but other just, days, yeah, it's all about. Okay, well, this is. I want to focus on that, and that's what I want to shoot. So. Yeah, and like down here, I look at sun direction a lot because of the bay. Like each beach is like a bay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna wait till certain times of the year till the sun gets a bit further south, so the light gets into that bay. Yeah. Uh, because then it doesn't affect the shadows as much. So like it's all that planning, and yep. I think. If you have the right set of, you know, if you 99% of the time you can go in with a, a plan and a shot list. And if you got that shot list and you can, especially if you get the info off the client, that's even better. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. You, if you add a couple of things to it and surprise them, that's even better. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, shot list organization. That, that's what I'd say. So, what are the things that you've learned about the world through photography? It's not all about Instagram. I know that. <laughs> um, there's stuff that is stuff that doesn't have to be posted on Instagram. Yeah, uh, a lot, lot of that, unfortunately. Yeah, it's stuffed that many places. But oh, it's learnt. It's learnt, photography's learnt made me learn to appreciate what I didn't appreciate when I was younger. Yeah, that's and that's what I was getting back to with that. The beauty of what actually is at my doorstep. Yep. Uh, um, and yeah, just yeah, we're only a little, we're only, and especially with the drone, we're around the ants, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. we're so small and the world's a lot bigger place than, you know, we really think it is, or what some people think they are. Absolutely. Um, it's just, I think you've got to, with the photography, you've got to take every, every moment as if it's your last, you're not your last, but like just cherish it. You know, because you don't know when you're going to be back to that place. Oh, absolutely, and that's that's the thing, particularly you know, for an overseas trip or something where you don't know you don't know if you'll ever get back there. You know, I mean, there's yep. there's places I definitely want to go back to, and there's places that I know I definitely will go back to because uh, yep. you know my, my wife's family is all from the UK, so yep. I, I know I'll I know I'll be able to go back to some of those locations, but yep. there's other locations that you, you know you're never going to get again. And yep. it's like if I don't nail it, you know, oh well, too bad. Well, that's it. And, uh, that's it. Like you know, 
when we're shooting our own backyard, we can plan sunrises and everything like That's that. It. But, yeah. you know, that you just got to, you know, if you do go to those spots and you don't get the right conditions, just make the most of it and enjoy it and be grateful you even got there, I think. You know, like, just be grateful. Um, you know, like, I was in Western Australia and I was planning on going back over to, up to Exmouth, up to Ningaloo and all that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't know when I'll be back there. I don't know if I'll ever be back there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, I've been to WA a couple of times now and, like, that southern coastline is just stunning. Absolutely, yeah. And I just don't know pretty, when I'll be Pretty back. much everywhere there from Bunbury all the way around to Esperance, you know, it's yep. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, you know, it's... It's like here. It's that untouched. Yeah, yeah. It's national park. It's untouched, and that's. I think that's why I liked it so much because it was similar to here. It did have. It had that feeling of home, like you know, like it did yeah, have that yeah. wild southerly winds and rain and everything like that when it was like it, but also that paradise, you know. So absolutely. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I think just and, take, and, and not many people as well, which is the other. No, no like that's it. Like I was at some beach like Lucky Bay. Yep. Esperance's um, posters. Yeah. Um, there was people everywhere, but you, there was still a full beach with no one on it. You know? <laughs> that's so that's it. what it's just so good. Like that's why I loved it so much. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But I mean, definitely don't take any spot you go to for granted. I think it's just yeah. you know cherish it. So what what's the, the the plan when lockdown finishes and you can actually get out and. Uh, get around the country or get overseas again? What is it? Is it an overseas trip or is it you know oh. somewhere more local, New South Wales or Birmingham? <laughs> I'll be going to Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be the first place I can go. Actually, I've got to go down there for work next week. So, because of me locksmith, and I can go down there at work. So that's yeah, fair works. enough. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't know to be honest. I'd love to go back to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, but it's. Oh, I nearly got over there. I think I was nearly going to drop it at a hat just to a trip over there, but then I was lucky I didn't because lockdown over over you know, they locked us out, so no. we're never able to get back. But um, I don't honestly, mate. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna. I'll probably wait till the borders open up and we don't have to hotel quarantine or quarantine at home. Yeah, yeah. Which I know I'm going to be waiting a long time for that. Probably middle. Yeah, of I Tuesday. think it could could be as late as 2023, depending on what they end up doing. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know because I don't I can't afford to do the hotel uh, home quarantine time wise. Yeah, yeah. I'm the uh, I'm the same. Yeah. You know, like I, I can afford to do it, but it's more so I can't mentally afford to do it. Yeah, no, that that's that's exactly what I mean. You know. Yeah, oh, I, I just two, two, two weeks out of out of your your schedule for, you know, just being locked up, and I've, I've been locked up now for ten weeks, and that that's well no. and truly enough. You know? Yeah, like you know, <laughs> I don't I could, want to do it again. <laughs> I could make sure I take enough photos to sit here for two weeks, but you're seeing it sick of that. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know, mate. I did a, did a trip earlier this year. Just a spontaneous road trip, actually, up to uh, Coolangatta. Oh, yep. Um, I just woke up Tuesday morning and said, oh, stuff it. I'm going to Queensland on tomorrow. So I drove to Queensland, drove up Coffs Harbour, stayed at a mate. So that was a really nice trip by yeah. myself just to go and shoot Byron Bay. But I really wanted to shoot a lot of ocean surfing photography. Yeah, yep. And I was able to, because I spent like two weeks at Coolangatta, Every morning, I was in board shorts and a t-shirt out there floating in the ocean at sunrise. Yeah, and it was I loved every minute of it. Yeah, like, I could have, oh, wouldn't you? you know, yeah, oh, it was just not having to go to work, and <laughs> but it's um, yeah, like I don't know. I think I think just to, I'd love to go to not Alice Spring, not Alice Springs, um, Ez Rock, or yeah, I'd love to go up to Kakadu or. The Kimberley is probably the place I really want to go. Yeah, have you been there before? Uh, it's, yeah, I, 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 I did a trip to Broome. Well, I mean, when was that? Two thousand six. That, that's how long ago it was. Uh, did did a trip up to Winjana Gorge, uh, Fitzroy Crossing. Um, where else did we go? Tunnel Creek. Yep. Um, you get the Bungle Bungles. No, I didn't didn't get up there. We um I forget it. We we were going to, but we I, I forget why we didn't. It was that long ago. 
but um, oh, just the, I mean, just flying into Broome, for example, you know, just the colours of the water and the yeah. the white sand, the red, you know, desert oh. rock and and dirt above the white yeah. sand. It's just this aqua aqua green, brilliant yeah, well, white, and then the green and things like the mangroves and the the, the undergrowth and everything around there. It's just yeah. it's so vibrant. And yeah, there's that little spot north of Broome there. What's it called? It's a very popular drone drone photography spot. Uh, the red, you got the green, <laughs> red, white, and blue, and it just uh, looks amazing. Yeah, no, so, it, and you don't don't have to touch your saturation slider at all. It's uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's no, just, I'd, I'd love to go to, get up there and see some you know some red dirt. Like yeah. I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to get to X mouth and go and dive with the whale sharks and humpbacks and yeah, yeah, you know, blue and all that, but. I don't know. I'm pushing my friendship with Mark McGowan. I think there. So <laughs> I don't. I don't think we'll be in WA next year. So no. Well, I, think, I think WA wants to keep the uh, the border well and truly closed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I completely understand Mark McGowan's. Oh yeah, definitely. He beat himself up a bit this morning on um, TV. So yeah, I get it. They they don't have the system to keep cope. No, well, that's it. They 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 don't have the medical. Uh, facilities that you do over on the east coast, and you know they they would be hard pressed if they had every man and his dog turning up. You know, to... and then they don't have the they don't have the like the people to administer the vaccinations too. So that's why. No, they're that's, like, that's it. Yeah. I get that, and like it's you just got to be patient. I think, and like it's just what yep. it is. Just a waiting game at this stage. Yeah. What, so what, what about yourself? Where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go everywhere and nowhere, you know. <laughs> yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. Uh, I, I was talking to uh, Glenn Crouch um, from iGear Photography the other day and, uh, you know, he, we, we were talking about having some kind of get-together once all the, you know, and how you do it COVID safe and all the rest of that, that's a consideration. But once lockdown ends, how do you, how do you get people together and, you know, have a have a bit of a celebration, you know, somewhere. Maybe Birmingham Geary is the right way to do it. You know? Yeah, that's it. Plenty of beach area down there. The footy that's down. it. But uh, but I, I I I think the first first thing I'll do is head head to a beach, any beach, and you know, just get my feet wet. Um, so get your feet wet, and yeah, and then uh, the yeah, probably. I know, I know, I know. Once international borders open up. The UK's on the cards because the uh, wife hasn't seen any of her family over there. She, her parents, uh, you know, they're they're in their eighties, and uh, you know, getting over to see them, uh, I, I think it'd be a priority. So, yeah. um, you know, from there, I don't know. I, I'd I'd love to do New Zealand, as you said. I'd you know, I'd love to love love to go and do Patagonia. Love to do Iceland. There's it, it, too, too too long a list. <laughs> Yeah, oh, mate, it is. It is. It is for sure. Like, Iceland is definitely one of those. I, I felt like before COVID, it was overshot. Yeah. You know, like, but it was. But it was just such a stunning landscape. Yeah. You couldn't stop looking at it. Well, I've seen, seen some of the uh, US photographers or the the ones that do workshops. They've they've kicked off workshops over there uh, over in Iceland. So. I did see that because that volcano went off over there. Yeah, yeah. And so the, that the there's still a bunch of people, but there, I, I still think there's probably a few people that have enjoyed the the, the break. They've been able to, you know, get get to all of the fosses and uh, you know take take shots without people in them. You know? Yeah, well, that's it, and that's like I'd love to get back to Japan. Yeah, same here. I I, I go back to Japan in a heartbeat. I, I love I love that place and. Uh, you know, we would definitely go there. Yeah, the, I think there's everything about it, the culture, like the photography. I love shooting something that I wouldn't usually shoot, which was street photography. Yeah, oh, and it, it's it, it's a mecca for that. You know, around around Tokyo, Kyoto, there's just yep. so many so many sites, and I, I guess it's just you know that it's got that iconic Asian feel that you know you, you see a lot of people doing the. The cyberpunk thing to their shots, you know, with lots of magenta and uh, cyan yep. and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, 
you know, um, yeah, it's just uh, just one place. Uh, my uncle lives over there, so I oh, want cool. to go back over there and see him and see my auntie and that. And, um, yeah, it's just a good to get out of Mount Fuji again and stuff like that, which was great, right. you know. Like, it's just a night. Nice, yeah, that Mount Fuji's an eye-opening. That is just huge. Yeah, it, it uh, puts Kosciuszko to shame, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Australia's yeah. flat. The whole Australia's flat. That's it. Uh, in, in comparison to places oh, like that. You know? Across the ditch at New Zealand. Yeah, no, I know. You drive out of Christchurch and it's just like farmland like here and all of a sudden you see these things start to rise out of the ground. Yeah. And it's a hill, but the hill's two and a half k's high next to you. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Well, I, I, was, I was in uh, Canada uh, in uh, December 2019. And uh, we we did a heli trip uh, from a place near Lake Abraham and uh, went up to this lake, which was at about 2,000 metres and the lake's in a valley. Yeah, um, right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, Canada's one of those places like New Zealand, yeah. isn't it? So you, you, you're flying up to 2,500 metres and whatever and, and landing at about, two, I think it was about 2,200 on the lake and there's these peaks which are getting up to you know they're they're another kilometer high you know so it's uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal uh, you don't you don't realize how flat australia is in in comparison until you see something like that yeah well new zealand walking up to uh mount cook in the morning for sunrise i that really just said straight to me it was just it was like <laughs> a salt, like a salt pine yeah <laughs> All right. So who who's uh, sort of catching your eye that you think I should be talking to? Is there anyone that you uh, you really like and their work and that you think would have a good story behind it? That's a bit of a hard one because I haven't been on Instagram as much. Or, you know, like just following. <laughs> I've just had a break. Like I yeah, post a couple of that, that was it. It just was. I think because you're not out shooting too, but uh, there's. Ben, ben Mack is always – Ben Mack. Yeah. Uh, he's just – yeah, like me and him are very similar, think the same, but he's he's been in lockdown like yourself for 10, 10 weeks and that. Yeah. And I can only imagine how stir-crazy he is going. Um, but, yeah, Ben's a really interesting person because he's very smart business-wise as well, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Regards to how marketing himself and everything, him, him as a brand – Yep. Um, and his family, like, cause they'd go and do hotel shoots and that, um, and that, that side of it. So, like, I I find Benny really interesting. Um, oh, who else is there? Everyone's backed off Instagram. Everyone's backing off a bit. Like, it's just gone. <laughs> it's gone a bit quiet. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still doing a post today, but they're all old edits, you know, or yeah. new edits of old shots, you know. See, that's one thing I try and like. Yeah, I just, I yeah, I just try and post it. If I can't, I hate going to the same beach at the same time. Or the yeah, no, I I know what you mean. Yeah. Especially with the drone photos, because there's only you know once you see the beach from, but it's a different sunrise, so it makes it a little bit different. So sure. Um, oh, who else is there? Oh, I can't think off the top of my head. You got me stunned on that one. Ah, uh, no worries. That's that, that's totally fine. So what do you what do you like to do when you're not out shooting? Drink a beer. <laughs> oh, I like seriously so like I don't oh, blame I love, you. I love me yeah, I love watching me footy on telly and everything like that um, yeah. but like I mostly just I'll get like my weekend if I'm not working I won't work but it's more like yeah, I'll get up for if the sun is, sunrise is good on sun, Saturday I'll be out on Sunday and taking photos and spending a bit of time at the beach even, even in golden hour just getting those actual land shots um I'll come home and edit and then probably just go and see the nieces and nephews and then maybe you cut the beers with some mates in the arbor. Sounds good. Pretty simple. Don't get too technical. No, 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 nothing wrong with, with keeping it simple, mate. And, uh, no, no. So, yeah, no, um, yeah, oh, the photography, like my mates were getting sick of me yeah. because I wasn't out having a beer with them because I'd rather stay home and wait for the good sunrise. Yep, yep. So... Uh, I won't yeah, go. No, no, no fun uh, shooting with a hangover either. 
Well, when you're pissed, still probably no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I, I seriously would rather stay home than go out yeah. and have beer than that. I, if I know there's going to be a good sunrise, because I, I just learnt last summer probably more than anything of this. Last summer, you know how we had all that rain, and we had yeah. like three sunrises, I think. Yeah. We've had more. Yeah. I had more in one week this year in winter than I did in summer. Yeah. You know, so it's more so don't take it for granted. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I know I might be missing out, but I can go and have beers with my mates the next weekend. Not a problem. But that sunrise might not come again. You know, so like if it's yeah, right. I think it's just I want me personally to make the most of every opportunity I'm given, and I feel like Mother Nature she's given back to us a bit now after everything, yeah, and totally. you know that's where I zen out and. Mindset, but that's a good mindset too. Like for me, like mentally, is actually, I feel a bit more clear headed. You know, like I know it feels like everything, the stars are aligning, everything, it's flowing. So, sounds good. So, that's, yeah, that's me pretty much. <laughs> All right. I've only got one more question for you, and it's, it is definitely the most important question. And I think you know what it is. <laughs> Do you like pineapple on pizza? Sure, bloody do. <laughs> well, it's uh, it, it's definitely racking up the fours versus the against so far. But uh, uh, well, I think it's I think it's Australian. Well, it's the Australian thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I've I've found a, found a few uh, international people that are on board, but there's a few that aren't. You know, there's also a few Aussies that I, I expected to be all for it who uh, who are dead against it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got that sweet tooth. So yeah, fair enough. Pineapple. I like my favourite pizza would have to be a ham pineapple pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, brilliant. So. All right. Well, it's been absolutely wonderful uh, spending time with you, Josh, and uh, uh, really for having us, Grant. hearing your story. Um, where can people find your work? Um, so they can uh, find me work on Instagram. It's uh, at Josh underscore Birkinshaw, um, Josh Birkinshaw Images on Facebook or Josh Birkinshaw Images dot com dot au. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks again, mate. And uh, I appreciate it. Definitely be in touch about it. Uh, a, a session down there in Birmingham if we can uh, we can get yeah. something going. I'd, I'd, I I really I, like the sound of that idea. And- I, yeah, I really do. Like Davey approached me about it and like we bounced it off each other, you know, and we haven't spoken about it since because of everything obviously everything happening. I yeah, think yeah, it just yeah. But I, I, I think it I, I think it's uh definitely definitely worth seeing if we can't sort something out and uh right. get, get some people uh get, get some people, people into the local uh local area. Yeah. Get people that might know how to organise something like that big as well. Um if yeah. anyone knows anyone or anyone has organized stuff that big to maybe contact me or Davey or whatever if, if we end up going ahead with it just to because I've got no idea you know like yeah. I know I you know I know what accommodation we need and everything like that but it's more so the planning of it if, if anyone can help yeah you know more. that's the thing you can't just have people turn up and just have them wander uh, around town or wander around the beaches and whatever you got you got to work on yeah packages um you know if we can find a guest speaker you yeah. know, someone's you know well known in the photography world that everyone, you know, even if it's a couple of different areas, you know, like landscape photography, drone photography. The drone photography for me is just another, it's an, another thing altogether. You know, yeah, like it's. Um, but if, you know, like, you know, I'd be happy to speak at it or something like that for the drone side. But then someone for landscape, and you know, and, you know, you can have a Q and A afterwards, and you know, I think just I think it'd just be an awesome night and. When everything opens up and we're COVID, you know, we're not worried about getting mark. We could don't have to wear masks and that, and we can yep. be all free. Um, I think just everyone will, will really, really enjoy it. All right, thanks, mate, and uh, I'll I'll definitely be in touch on that. It's uh, I I think it's well worth doing. Yeah, much appreciate, Grant. Thanks for having us once again, mate. No worries. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work and this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. I'm also on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne and hope to see you out shooting soon. Mm -hmm.